We're back. They're back. It's Wizard Lord D. Tessinator. Yeah, so we're back to watching another movie today after what a couple of uh, hiatus and inter (laughs) inter interventions and such. And it was like the gods must be crazy. So yes, that's what we're doing today, guys. The gods must be crazy. Yes, on uh, VHS, uh, an epic comedy of absurd proportions. Yes. I believe you also told me that this was not the original cover for it. I've uh, actually not seen it myself. No, this this was altered. They, they included the... I forget, what was his name again? That character? Damn it. It, it was... Let's just say like, it was his friend. Yeah, his friend. The main... Uh, well, I wouldn't say he's the main actor, but I mean... Like the supporting cast. Yeah, the guy who plays Stain or Mr. Stain, uh, his... One of his buddies, he's like a repairman, basically, uh, and he has knowledge of the the tribe that's in this film. Anyway, they, well, he speaks Bushman because he lived with them for a couple yeah, of years. Bushman. But uh, but yeah, they have him on the cover here, I guess, because uh, they they felt that it it was funny. It was funny, I guess. He's like, like it, it looks kind of weird. <laughs> it looks kind of weird. Yeah. But anyways, uh, so the back of the synopsis: an epic comedy of absurd proportions for five. For 5,000 years, things have stayed pretty much the same for Zai and his fellow Bushmen. Then one day, an empty Coke bottle yeah. drops magically from the sky, and life goes topsy-turvy in the face of this generous gift of the gods. When Zai sits... I probably screwed up his name. It's like Z-Zai. Z-Zai, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, when Z-Zai sets off to return the mystical present, he encounters a romantic microbiologist, a school teacher, and the band of terrorists. All enmeshed in a plot so insane it could only happen in the civilized world. True. An international sensation, The Gods Must Be Crazy, is one of the most original, thought-provoking, and entertaining comedies ever. Starring a real-life Bushman, Zhao, it's a movie that looks at us from the other side and shows us just how crazy we are. Approximately 109 minutes, color 1984. Yes, although the film came out in uh, 1980. I don't know why they said 84 in the back. But yeah, it's 1980, guys. So that's uh, it's quite a while from, right? That's uh, 30. Is it 30? Yeah, it is, right? 36 years, guys. Long, long time. Yeah. Yeah, about that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that'd be about th- <laughs> over 30 years and stuff. So yeah. you recommended this movie. I forget why, but well, uh, I saw it when I was younger. Uh, it was on. Uh, my dad had recorded it from City TV back in the day when it was air- airing on TV. And I, as when I saw it, you know, I found it pretty funny, and uh, I just, I really enjoyed this film, it, and it did really well. It had a sequel, um, which was different from from this film, quite different. Uh, but did you like the sequel? <laughs> you know what? It's pretty forgettable. I don't remember much about it. Yeah, I guess this one had much of a greater impact. I guess it must be should have been called "The God Must Be Forgotten." Yes, I think so. Or they're crazy to make a sequel. Yes. But uh, yeah, so what do you, what did you think? This is your first time checking it out. Okay, because uh, when you were trying to explain to me about this plot, I was like, oh, hmm, this sounds kind of silly. And yeah, it is silly, but after watching it in its entirety, I actually really, really like it. I would actually watch it again, like yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's, just, it's very charming. It's, it's, it's quite funny, too. And it feels like a one-hour movie, but this is really, it's uh, an hour and 50 minutes. Yeah. Which, Just um, well, oh, I gotta say, that's pretty impressive. I, I would actually watch it again. Although the first, like, four minutes of it, it looked like a National yeah, Geographic yeah, picture. <laughs> I, I was just like, oh boy, we're starting with stuff like this. But, um, it's very deceiving. It's like, it's really good. Yeah, it so, starts off, but it's trying to teach us, like, about this, this, this Bushman, the, the tribes, right? That they're, how, like, how they live and... How everything's so peaceful. Not you know they have no no outside factors. They like they don't no... live like our lives. It's just no. it's just like you know everyone's <laughs> all nice to each other. They're all like uh, they're all yeah, a nice they, family. They and, work together. You know they don't care about all, all these worldly possessions and stuff of ours. They just live their lives. Yeah. They don't have to go through the stress of income. It's like oh people in the civilized world at eight double zero they have to pretend to be working and at this time they do this this and this yeah they show us what we do in our supposed civilized and world. then you know when you look at it compared to them it's like wow their life are so much more simplistic and yes that's true but at the same time it's it doesn't seem like stressful at all it's just like they just live and that's life and, uh, they... and then there's a moment where the two worlds clash thanks to a coke bottle that is can we by, by, drop <laughs> by someone by some lazy asshole who was flying a plane, a plane and it drops, and it like a 
uh, he pol- he quote unquote pollutes uh, the place because yeah. well he was throwing his trash that's called yeah, pollution. It's pollution yeah. So um, for so Zizai because uh, coming from a place where it's not civilized compared to us, things are completely different and seem different are are completely different and seem very mystical and magical to him. So uh, like you know when. When they said when the narrator said the planes fly and it's like oh it's the gods flatulent and stuff and yeah. then drops the coke bottle and it's like uh, oh it's a gift from the gods. <laughs> I gotta I gotta say that I found that like quite amusing how the way they wrote it and what and whatnot that they made so much use out of a glass coke bottle. I was like yeah because I was telling you like when I look at a well you, just a bottle or a container just, it's just like I just drink it but no they used it for everything from beating things. Rolling up skins and uh, snake skins and whatnot. Yeah, it became a very useful tool until everyone needed it. Yeah, until like people wanted to claim it as their own. Like because there was only one. Yeah, there was only one. So that that that's what caused problems. Kind of like the whole, I guess. Uh, I don't know if I was talking about the whole Adam and Eve thing where uh, they're getting more knowledge about uh, the world. The world, and it's you know, then it causes some conflict between each other. It kind of reminds me of this um, one manhwa I was reading, like a uh, while. Whenever it gets updated, where this guy gets trapped on an island, and these like these natives, like they're just living peacefully, but he like fucks up the s- ecology of that uh, system by introducing things like like a possessions and all that stuff. And all well, the main character was a real asshole. I gotta say, okay. they, but in this case, it's like. Um, was it the was it the leader or what? It, oh, anyway, Zizai was Zizai. like, like this evil thing must be um, mu- must be thrown off at the end of the world. But like first time they try to throw it back in the sky, but obviously gravity did not back. occur to them no. in that way. So he goes on to this quest to go get rid of the bottle, and that's where he clashes in with all the other um, people, the biologist, school teacher, and whatnot. You know what? Uh, like I was asking earlier, like because um, I was like, are these Actors are and... these actors or actual Bushmen? And it was like I was like, it's probably Bushmen, and they they, they cooperated yeah, they to make this film. I wonder did the, the act that the uh, actor Zizai or Zhao yeah, Zao. ever saw the film because I think it would have been kind of amusing just to see like uh, what he's done. But I don't think it bothers him because you know he doesn't need it. Yeah, like I'm, I'm not even sure. Like they don't even accept payment, right? So they probably gave them food, and I guess that was what they. <laughs> or just some sort of something reasonable. Right? No. Yeah, because like at the end, I was like, oh, he tried to, uh, Mr. Stain tried to give him money, but it's like, they, but his friends like they don't, they don't need money. Yeah, with, yeah, as the in the character context, yeah, it's true. Um... I was, I was, and I was like, <laughs> you know, they could have just given him a ride. That that would have been fine. But, oh well, he got back to where he was. Yeah. So, I mean, there's definitely a lot of stereotypes type characters in this film. We had... Oh, uh, like uh, the city girl? Yeah, the city girl. Kind of like... I don't know if she's like high maintenance, but she's like a teacher. And then we have Stane, who's like an archaeologist. Well, not really an archaeologist, right? A biologist. Biologist, sorry. Kind of like a Steve <laughs> Irwin or something like yeah. that. But he's a bit of a klutz when it comes to uh, women. In- interactions with women. And uh, then there's the... I forget his name, but there's a big shot guy who just who just comes in conveniently pretending. Oh, the the, the rival guy who the yeah. stereotype who is like, uh, hey, I'm much better around women than you. It's like, hey, yeah. nature boy, why don't you keep digging up shit? Because he, he analyzes manure, and I was yeah. like, that's his job. Yeah, so he's always trying to like one up, you know, stain throughout the film, and uh, even at one point he's just trying to take credit for saving. Everybody, when it was actually Stan, who was, who was yeah, when the, the when the terrorist yeah. uh, that when the terrorist like uh took hostages of like the children the and children. stuff, including Mrs. Uh, Bots- Botswana, was it? It was in Botswana, yeah, Botswana, yeah. Botswana. or at least they ended up in Botswana yeah. eventually, because uh, there's this plot with the terrorists where they were they were trying to kill the president of of a uh, co- of a certain of a certain country. Yeah. I wanted to say Botswana, but that that's no. not where they were. <laughs> they ended up in Botswana. Yeah. But they tried to kill uh, the president. They failed because they went and killed the minister of education. And it's like, how'd you mess this up? So then they're on the run from like the authorities, and then it led up to the point where everyone, where the climax, the, the climax point where everyone like bumps into each other. Mm. Let's sure. see. So there was the plot about Zizai trying to get rid of the model, the, the which evil, he calls the, the evil, evil thing, thing. <laughs> which is a Coca Cola bottle. Uh, and Mister Stain, who's trying to uh, trying to get over his. 
his um fears i guess or anxiety not anxiety yeah. but it, like his 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 bumbling of like trying to confess to the teacher who uh who came who came to botswana to teach the children yeah in class i, I kind of somewhat miss that i thought she was there for something i thought she was supposed to write an article or something yeah. as i said earlier in the film like oh they wanted me to write an article but i'm not so sure about that she gets captured as a hostage along with the children and from because of the terrorists that were running about. And then at the end, it all resolves. And, well, the pacing is really good, like I said. I felt the movie felt very, very short. It does, yeah. And it, it does have, like, the moments where, like, it seems like it was rewinding. Sort of. <laughs> the, the editing you were referring to. The editing is very yeah. wacky. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, ay, I noticed. <laughs> God, those catchphrases yeah. are so so lame, but yet, like you can kind of let it go because it's a. Uh, it kind of becomes funny after a while. Yeah, it does. But yeah, the editing it was very. If it if you did that editing in any other movie, like something serious, it would like just kind of ruin, ruin it. But I mean, it's a comedy. So. It's a comedy, so you kind of let it slide. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's still acceptable. good. It's still it's still good though. They had a good pacing, and if it was done like um, like if you. Like, if you did that editing, like, say, in, like, other Batman movies, I would have just been, like... Nah, you know, yeah, you would have accepted that. But... Well, maybe Adam West Batman. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, but, like, uh... <laughs> yeah, the editing, it's, it seems questionable, but you kind of let it slide because it's a comedy. And the co- the comedic parts are are quite funny. Um, There's not too many... Actually, there's a quite a bit of slapstick around here, but not, like, uh, yeah. the Three Stooges kind. A little bit. I mean, with the whole Jeep... Uh... <laughs> oh god there's a big thing that going on with the, with the jeep that plays no breaks, uh... like it it's a broken jeep that mr stain like drives around uh taking with uh what was the lady's name again i keep forgetting the name uh, that's that's Mrs. A... thompson i think or kate hey, kate thompson, yeah, kate thompson. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah i <laughs> the names just escaped me I, I don't know why like i like the movie and i know the characters but i don't remember their names that they don't really like mention them enough i think that, that's one of the things i mean mr Stan, you hear enough and and uh thompson but the other characters we don't really hear their names that often yeah. like you hear them so, once in a while yeah. like uh Zai, like we didn't know i didn't know his name for the longest time until he was in court yeah like yeah, that's halfway in the movie which is an interesting scene because and that from that character's perspective they they're not aware of you know laws they don't they don't, they don't, have, they don't laws. have laws right so yeah so they don't have like evil yeah. bad so he doesn't uh, until know. certain things happened yeah they, so, that, so i guess that's what allowed him to get out right because they mm, in a way like they no that's what caused mr stain and his friend to like uh try and get him out because yeah, uh, his friend was stuck with like he was saved by the bushman and lived with him for three years that's how he was able to yeah. interpret for them and he's the like language. he's going he's going to die if he's in jail yeah if he get, if he just stays there for three months yeah oh jeez <laughs> so, so they they employ these eye uh when they first met though it was like uh they tried to he tried to give them back the glass bottle but it was like to them it's just trash it's like why are you giving me trash and not realizing that you know to him he, it's, to him, it's like it's yeah. like this really mystical magical object it was just it was just quite funny yeah, uh, I'm trying to think what else we could touch on. I mean, we were talking about like perspective, right? So with Ziza or Zai, whatever his name is, uh, you know, from his point of view, he's not aware of cars or anything. So the first time he sees like the tracks of a car, he thinks it's like two snakes. That <laughs> slid his interpretation of the world funny. is very funny, yeah, and considering funny. that, like, because we know what it is, yeah. and but but he doesn't. And then eventually, uh, he kind of learns about it, and then and even drives a car. Yeah. Oh, when he drove the car in reverse, in reverse yeah. it was funny because I, I imagine in his head it was like uh he's like you you stupid animal go forward <laughs> and he just doesn't get it and then he had to like actually sit backwards yeah, back. to like drive it like that was so yeah, that, sure. that was fu- that was well, funny backwards thinking worked then in that case but uh yeah that's, yeah that happens a lot because the the truck had the brakes doesn't work so no. every time like people had to get out of the cars to like run past to try and stop it and such that yeah, was pretty silly. Um, what else can we point out? I mean, everybody in their own way of life, I guess they... Oh yeah, I was talking about, like, this movie also feels like a social commentary, It too. does, for Without sure. Without really shoving it down your throat. I mean, the part where the narrator is like, civilization does this at this certain time, and this is uh, what happens. And it's like, like, oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, that's tr- pretty true. Uh, everyone in the civilized world works nine to five or yeah. whatever stuff you know, like the bushmen i mean they don't have 
days of the week. They, they just, just live. Uh, they just survive. They just have fun. Yeah, they just operate on. I guess you know when the sun comes up, sun goes down. That's pretty much. How they live their a. Time is. They live a happy, healthy life. Yeah. Uh, Going back to the comedy, like the comedy spreads to everywhere. Like, uh, even, like when we mentioned the terrorists, even with them, yeah, it's... they're they're not super serious. They, <laughs> no. I mean, the, the leader is yes, but still, even then, it's comedic. Like with the two guys always playing cards, yeah, always and cards. I liked how that yeah. actually played into the end, where it's like, hey, where'd the other? Two Why guys. are there only six guys here? And it's like, oh, the reason because uh, <laughs> not all of them were here was because those two guys kept playing fucking like, cards. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't take their situation very seriously. Like you, because you were saying like yeah. maybe they didn't want to be bad. It was just like, oh, you know, just, we're just here. And... I think that's what they were commenting uh, in the movie. They're saying, you know, maybe some of the people, they're you know, they're victims of their surroundings. I mean, maybe they don't want to be bad, bad, but they're just what can know, they do? They just live there, so they became terrorists. But you can tell deep down, they I don't think they want to be. They're just playing cards all the, at any time. They they, they, they slack up whenever given the chance. Yeah, pretty much, like that some Boha guy who always wants them to, you know, it's like, hey, what do you it is doing? You know, he wants them to, you know, you play much. again, nice shoot you. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. But maybe the movie's also trying to say that, you know, you should just be yourself, uh, no matter where you are. I mean, even with the uh, stain in the end, you know, he's a bit of a klutz around woman, but I guess it wins it wins Mrs. Thompson over in the end. So even though the I forget the, what his, that what, other guy he's like he's like the face the whole face <laughs> oh oh his friend the guy on the on yeah, the, the cover, cover he's, right. he's funny he's yeah, he's comedic funny. and kind of just like um he's kind of like the wise uh, supporting character. Yeah. Like he's just like, yeah, I know what this is. Well, he has seven wives, I suppose. Oh, yeah, yeah. He knows how to marry seven wo- seven women, but he doesn't know how to live, live with them. them. I was like, oh, ouch. Yeah. That's funny. And yeah. That's just funny. Well, what else can we touch on in this film? Uh, see, that's what, that's why it's like, it's somewhat difficult talking about a, about a comedy. It like is, with yeah. the, Like with the mask, because it's like, we just talked about whether we liked it or not. And I really, really liked it. I liked the comedy. I would definitely watch it again. And, yeah. I would highly recommend that uh, if you ever get the chance, watch it. It's really, really like uh, fun to watch, and it's really good too. Yeah, and I think most people will enjoy it. Of course, uh, assuming you can find a DVD of it, I they got some secrets. Yeah, there is a DVD. Yeah, I just I just happen not to have it, but uh, yeah, yes, thankfully I do ha- have a VHS, VHS. player. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bet you don't know what a VHS player is. Well, one thing we we're talking about. We we're wondering if the subtitles would have maybe translated with Z. Oh or Z yeah, because there know. were many moments where it's like because um... he makes these clicking sounds. You know, he's like, I don't know, <laughs> but it's hard to understand. Like it's like I kind of would have liked some subtitles because during yeah. parts where they weren't translated by uh, Stain's friend mm-hmm. to like tell us like, oh, what did he say? It's just like uh, I guess it leaves it up to your imagination. Yeah, it, it depends does. on how you think. Because if there's subtitles, and it's like you're always gonna it, think. It throws her, yeah. it, you're always gonna think just what that is, but if it. But when it's not there, you can be like, oh, he's probably saying this and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. I can see that, too. I mean, there was a film uh, that my dad always says I should watch called The Third ba- Third Man back in the, I think, 30s or 40s. And, yeah, there was a, a scenes where the language isn't, you know, the, there's no subtitles. So you just have to, like, interpret, interpret it. what's going on. And it made it more... I don't know. You, you, I open-minded? Guess, open-minded, and you had to be more alert as to what was going on with the characters that way. Yeah, because yeah. the other thing is, if you did put subtitles, our eyes would be glued to the text, and yeah. then not as much as to the overall thing, because then you got to yeah. get t- kind of tunnel vision on it. It's true. Because a lot of times, I find that films want us to... Or the films that want to make us think, they want us to be as aware of, you know... Focus on, like, the on, picture, not yeah, the Yeah, exactly, tiny like, words. maybe the, the body language of the characters that can give away certain things, yeah. Because even when I'm with friends that, you know, speak other languages, I can kind of tell from body language what's, what might be going on, so it, it kind of helps, I guess, <laughs> decipher... If you don't understand, that's, the language, that's a certain. Right? It's yeah. a certain type of communication yeah. where you don't need to understand. You you understand the um, the, the feeling yeah. that's being expressed. Yeah, you don't understand sure. what they're saying exactly. Kind of like what what he said. He was like, <laughs> I understand the words, but I don't get the meaning behind them. <laughs> like this evil thing. Yeah, uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's, the Coke bottle is. I was wondering. It's like, are you? It's like, is that some sort of message about Coke being an evil yeah, that's thing? That's what I was wondering because. To have a Coke bottle featured in the film, and that that must be like one of the most memorable product placements, I would say. In, a, in it movie, could have just been a glass bottle, but it his, had to be Coke. Movie history, but anyway, like 
did they did they think they would they would use it to to that in that way like to make it an, an evil thing? Maybe they weren't aware. Maybe it's a subtle message. Yeah. Like uh, we like see we're we're overthinking it, but it's also <laughs> kind of amusing at the same time. Well, I don't because because some people think like oh it's just a Coke bottle. That's funny because we know what Coke is, but other are like say me. It's like is that is that like saying like Coke's bad? Because I do think so. Because I don't like Coke. <laughs> Yeah, I think it could it could mean that for sure. So I don't th- I don't think Coke had any idea what they were doing when they allowed their their brand to be in this. I wonder in this did they have to get rights for that Coke bottle? Because sure even on the back yeah. cover it says Coke bottle. It just said glass bottle, and that was the no, whole they, point they, of they it. They got rights, so, yeah. But uh, I guess since it was a comedy, they didn't really you know think too much about it. Maybe they say yeah yeah you can use her name whatever. They didn't really think they were gonna like maybe make a message about it as an evil thing, but yeah. Or maybe they didn't see it yet, and maybe after they see this, and they're and they like, go, oh, shh. Yeah, maybe. Too, th- thought about it too much. But that's what's so nice about this film. It's like, you, you just think about it, and then just talk about it. Yeah. And it's a, it's a pretty simple, you know, it starts out with a simplistic... You know, story. Sim- simplistic story, and, uh, but it works, with, it works... It's still simplistic throughout the whole entire yeah. thing, but it all, like, uh, works out together in the end. It all accumulates. Yeah, it does. As for the sequel, well, I don't remember anything about it, so I guess... It didn't have a, didn't. as much of an impact as this film had. Yeah, I don't know why, but <laughs> but I guess that kind of shows you maybe the movie in itself had a deeper meaning it behind did. it that it like did. the sequel didn't capture because it was just like oh it was funny because yeah that's the thing about our our civilized society so to speak is that when something does well you people try to people, copy people it. want to see more or they want more money right and in, in other cases so. It was only a matter of time that this film would become a product of itself and, you know, spawn a sequel, even though it didn't really need one. I definitely I would not need a sequel. Yeah. Like, I would just watch this again. You know, it's, yeah. it's it's like a timeless tale, almost. Yeah. But, yeah, anything else you would want to say about it? Because um, <laughs> whenever it comes to, like, comedy, and especially when the movie's, like, not even bad in the slightest bit, it's, it's like, I find that kind of hard to talk about, like, a good movie. It's just like, oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Well, we were commenting on, on uh, how you were saying that Jurassic Park had a scene that kind of seemed something like... Uh, oh, the elephant. The elephant, right? But in the Jurassic Park, it was a uh, triceratops, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, well, that was on the ground. Yeah, yeah the, the whole like, filming the wildlife stuff. There yeah. was that one part of the rhino that made me laugh. I was like, oh, yeah. that has to be plashed or thought, like, you know, rubber made because it was like the smoky bear that like... That put out the fire. <laughs> I was like, you, you can't get a real rhino to do that. I don't believe it. No, I think it's just part of the story. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Funny, but you know, yeah, it's, it's it like looked... it's like. But it, you had me questioning, like, real or not? It's definitely it has to be fake. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know what else we could say. I'm surprised mm. they didn't do that more. Like at the end, where it's like a uh, stains like summons the rhino and it comes like causes like panic around <laughs> or something like that. Or maybe that maybe the terrorists are trying to cook something and a rhino comes by. I was like, oh no, it's a rhino. And then like Miss. Uh, oh, then Kate sees it. It's like, oh, he wasn't lying. Yeah, they could have done that, but I guess, yeah, I guess they chose not to. Um, I think another reason why I don't remember the sequel is because the ca- the main cast actually, other than Z, didn't come back. Oh, really? I think that's why. Yeah, so it was different without Stain and uh, Miss Thompson. So, yeah, wasn't wasn't the same. Yeah. <laughs> so, would you recommend? Yes, I definitely recommend this. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, I'm sure you'll have a laugh. Give it, give it uh, two thumbs up, yes. I'd give it more. More? <laughs> if, if my fingers could turn into thumbs, like... Oh, like Stain said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Stain said. Yeah, yeah. Def- definitely watch it if you ever get the chance. Like, I really enjoyed it. I would I would like to watch it again, too. It's just it's just entertaining, and it gives you a good feeling at the end of it. Yes, it does. All right, well, anything else we have to uh, talk about? The nudity? No, I'm not... Like, I brought that up, but it was like, uh, you know, there's not much to say about it. Well, they were just trying to show that they were, you know, the Bush natural. Were, that's their natural environment, and there's no shame there either. Like, they're very, Because also, kid, uh, you, we do see her in lingerie, too, at points. Yeah. Like, they're not aware of, you know, all this, you know, sexy whatever thing. Because in, in Z's eyes, Kate's not even attractive. Like, he's like when he first sees Kate, he's like, what an, what an ugly woman. <laughs> she was as pale as the clouds and, was like, had ugly ass hair. And she was, like, webbing his clothing or something. Like, like clothing that looks like spider. made from cobwebs. <laughs> but, but oh. yeah, that's Gods Among Us. Epic comedy of absurd proportions. Yeah, Gods must be crazy. It's true. So, stay tuned for next time when we watch, uh... Something else. I don't know what it will be, 
But we'll have to see. Yes. We'll be back, guys. Peace. Stay tuned. It's Wayne Mundy Tetris Nader. It's Wayne Mundy Tetris Nader. It's Wayne Mundy Tetris Nader.